This is KRPR, Channel 67, Roper County's own UHF station. Stay tuned for more wrestling action after this brief commercial break. Hi, I'm Stanley Ferguson of Ferguson's Furniture City. Oh, Need no, new not furniture? this guy again. Want new furniture? Have to have new furniture. Don't have cash? Don't worry. Apply for instant credit now. On the spot approval. No credit hassles here. Low financing available, low interest, low prices. No more down, no payments for the first 30 days. Free delivery. Let's take a look at what's on the show. Where the hell do you think All you're going? Special this week and next and every week. I've so got a date. What? Bedroom sets, dinettes, all at low, low prices. This beautiful dining room date. table with matching chairs, a low, low $527. Buttery soft. You're not going anywhere. out of my own pocket. Visit any one of our 15 showroom warehouses. Come on down and say hello. I'm coming, Stanley. Forget we have dinner at eight at Monty's, and you promised me a movie afterwards. I won't forget. You wouldn't let me. No, you're right. <laughs> so that's what you're into now, huh, Stanley? It's okay. I can deal with that. Take a ride, honey. What? Indulge me. I think we're being followed.
let's find out. Probably just some kids fooling around. Hmm. Hello? Hi, honey. Hi. We were lucky you caught me. We were on our way out to a party. A party? A party? You should be studying. Yeah, right, Daddy. Like, you never partied when you were in school? I suppose there's gonna be, like, boys at this party, right? Of course there's gonna be boys. Mm -hmm. Anybody special? Maybe. Oh, I got a 97 on my Emerging Retail Trends paper. That's my girl. You keep it up and we'll have Ferguson and daughter off the ground in no time. You know, I wouldn't let you down. Yeah, I know that, baby. All right, you better go to your silly party. You want to talk to Mom? Um, that's okay, I gotta go. But tell her I love her. Yeah, I'll tell her. We love you too, babe. Bye-bye. She got a 97 on a paper. Like father, like daughter. She didn't want to talk to me, huh? She was on her way out the door. I wish I could talk to her the way you do. What are you talking about? You're her mother. I know. But sometimes it seems like she's your daughter. What are you up to today? Mmm, tennis with Marlene. Some gardening. Maybe ceramics. Sounds like a full day. It does. Wish I had time for all that, but I gotta go to the office. And I need your Joan Hancock on that. Uh, anything I should know about? No, just business stuff. I don't know why you're complaining. Well, I'm not really complaining. It's it's just that I thought all I ever wanted to be was a wife and a mother, but... Ah, beware of what you wish. Well, maybe I'm just whining. You are. <laughs> well, at least you've got your store to keep you busy. It's not that easy. To find a replacement for Helen. She's leaving. What about me? You want a job? <laughs> Why not? It'd be fun. Well, the only job I have ever had has been Stanley and Michelle. And Stanley, well, he's been spending twice as much time at that damn business ever since Michelle went away to school. Listen, kiddo. Hubbies go to work. Kids go to college. You did your job, Terry. You're off the hook. I don't know. I get the feeling that Michelle doesn't respect me. You know, I'm just her mom. I've always loved that Michelle and, and Stanley were so close. But since she's gone away... Boy, that sounds awful. I am jealous of how close they are. Mrs. Morrison, Mrs. Ferguson, your court is ready. Let's play some tennis. Get me back, I don't care what happens to me. Get me back to my wife and kids. $100 out of my own pocket. Visit any one of our 15 showroom warehouses. 
Come on down and say hello. Hey, George! George! You bet you know me? Know you? Huh. You kidding? I've been looking all over town trying to find you. I saw your car pile into that tree down there, and I thought maybe you made your mouth bleed. You sure you all right? You remember this morning I uh, <clears throat> asked you to hold on to something? No. No, I don't recall. Why don't you refresh my memory? Well, Merry Christmas! <laughs> I'm off to the field. Okay. Now, what time do you think you'll get there? Oh, I got meetings at one and two. Oh, it's Saturday. Don't you think you've been pushing it a little hard? No such thing. Besides, it's necessary. You know what I've been thinking? Mm. Why don't we fly up and surprise Michelle next weekend? I think that's a great idea. Because I got a big surprise for the two of you. Yeah, what is it? If I told you, it wouldn't, wouldn't be a surprise. Wouldn't be a surprise. Right. <laughs> wow. What did I do to deserve that? I love you. I'll try to be there by four. <laughs> Good. Bye. Oh, man. How long you think? Oh, a week at least. And this heat spell didn't help any, that's for sure. Captain Cantrell? Yeah. Uh, folks down the road said this fellow was living with a woman. Well, did they have a name to go with that? Uh, no, sir. Just said she was a brunette, about 40 or so. Uh, drove an old yellow Chevy. That's it. I guess they weren't exactly the most neighborly people. But OK, Deputy, I want you to go up and down this road and talk to everybody just like they were family. Right, Captain. You see them big, nasty exit wounds? Yeah. Hollow point loads. These are all addressed to the victim. Keep an eye on the mail from now on, yeah? Where do you think she is? Well, when we find out who she is, we'll find out where she is. She'll turn up. I guarantee it. Doing home so early. Cooking dinner. Tough day at the office. Look, ma'am, Miss. Yes, darling. Is, is this supposed to be some kind of joke or? Look, I don't know who you are. Where's my wife? Where's my wife? I'm your wife. Connie. You remember? We met in college. Fell in love. Got married and lived happily ever after. I've never seen you before. Now look, if you don't, if you don't get out of here right now, I'm gonna call the cops. Stanley. Put the phone down. Now sit down. 
Sit down. Stanley. Sit down. I thought Stan the man was going to come on down and say hello today. So did I. Oh, well, don't get bummed out. You know, it's not easy being the furniture king. I'm sure something must have come up. Oh, I'm sure it did. Business. Hey, why don't we spring Marlene? The three of us go out to dinner. What do you say? Thanks, Milton. But I, uh, I think I'll just go drive off some frustrations. You sure? Mm, I'm sure. Give Marlene a big kiss from me, huh? You do the same to Stanley from me. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't this nice? I've got what I want. I've got what I've always wanted. You were the first man to make love to me. You told me that you loved me. You're the only man I ever loved. In Nebraska State. Connie Stewart. Ferguson. Connie Ferguson. Mrs. Stanley Ferguson. Look, Connie. You don't have me. I don't. There's somebody else, isn't there? Put that down. Oh, no. We wouldn't think of hurting the picture. We wouldn't think of hurting the picture perfect wife. Terry. That should have been me. Take it easy, take it easy. Okay. I want you to write me a note. Now that FDA approval could be as far away as 18 months. The investigation continues in the Roper County murder of Jack Kornbeck, found shot to death in his home six days ago. Captain Cantrell of the County Sheriff's Department stated that there were... Just leave it there on the table. Will you please go now? It's all Terry's fault. Oh. 
something to remember you by. Did you arrive home? Um, a little after 7.30. I went for a drive. Where were you? Well, it was a uh, special kids track and field, and uh, we were over at 5. And then I, I went for a drive. Did uh, anybody see you? I, uh... Was there anything out of the ordinary? I mean, anything at all. Last night, a car followed us. What kind of car? I, I don't know. It was, um, um, like a tan color. I, I think I, I think I saw it parked down the street yesterday morning. Do you own a gun? No. Connie. I beg your pardon. Co Connie, that—that's what Stanley said just just before. He... Connie. Mm-hmm. Connie. He, he said it several times. Who is Connie? I don't know. Let me through, please, Terry. <clears throat> Stanley's dead. What? No. No. What? No. No. Sweetie. Is it possible that your husband was philandering? Are you about done with her? <clears throat> yeah. For now. Let's wrap it up, boys. Ma'am. Ma'am. We're very sorry about your loss. Thank you. Oh, I've got, I've got, I've got, I have to call Michelle. Michelle, honey. Um, please listen. What's wrong? You have to come home. What's wrong? Let me talk to Daddy. There, there's, there's, there's been an accident, and your father is... Mother, let me talk to Daddy! I can't. Come home, baby. So what do you think, huh? Statistically, smart money's on the wife. BDH, basic domestic homicide. I mean, the wife fixes dinner, he gripes, whatever, and bang, it happens all the time. Besides, there's too many holes in her story. Like what? Think about it. Nothing's missing, no forced entry, the mysterious car, the cryptic last words of the dead man. I mean, what does that sound like to you? Cryptic. Mysterious. <laughs> Ooh. Mm.
Right over here. Attention. Do you want to talk? I do. Well, I just, I want to be alone right now. But you're not alone, honey. Please, Mother. Please. What are you looking at? What are you looking at? Shot three times in the gut with a 32 hollow point. <laughs> That's maximum splatter gear. Yeah, well, there ain't no employees named Connie. Yeah. If, and I do say if there is a Connie, she's going to be someone who was passing time with Mr. Solid Citizen. When Mrs. Housewife found out, the bing three times in the gut. A bing, huh? I was sure you told me she shot him because he complained about dinner. Don't mock me, Pat. Excuse me, gentlemen. I have a young lady here you're going to want to talk to. She saw someone running from the Ferguson house the night of the murder. Okay. 72,005 to the plant in South Carolina. I hate these things. This is all just real quick accounting, okay? Uh, what, what does all that mean, Bruce? It means we're broke. Can we sell the business? Well, I'm afraid you're going to have to take a beating, but, uh, yeah, you can sell it. I mean, you don't have much of a choice, really, Terry. He was operating at a major deficit. Don't you know any of this? Well, I never had to. I'm sorry, I didn't mean anything. What about stocks, bonds, CDs, IRAs, anything? No. No, he liquidated everything for capital. What about insurance? Daddy was big on insurance. Oh, yeah, he was. But uh, he parred against it. <laughs> okay, look, Terry, look, the best that I can tell is that you've got just about enough here that's going to cover the funeral expenses, and that is it. Well... At least the house is ours. I'm afraid not, Terry. Bruce! This house has been paid for for 15 years. Yeah, I know, but he mortgaged the house. As a matter of fact, you, you got a $200,000 balloon payment that's due in 30 days. You, look, you signed the papers yourself, Terry?
Do we have anything? Yeah. You got $3,000 in your checking account. Look, Stanley was a brilliant businessman. Sometimes that just means that he can juggle better than anybody else. I'm sorry. I really am. We have a warrant to search the premises. There's some of them upstairs already. Uh, this is my lawyer, Bruce Gossiter. Well, that's uh, very convenient. It's all an order, counselor. You guys check downstairs. It appears to be an order. Excuse me, why are you searching our house? Why aren't you out there looking for the person who murdered my father? Michelle. That's what I'm doing, little girl. Uh, what exactly are you looking for? Clothes. We have a witness that saw a woman running from the house in a floral print dress. You better come downtown with us, Mrs. Ferguson. in the middle but she was wearing big sunglasses and different clothes oh I'm sorry I can't be positive well that's okay Marianne you can go now we'll uh, we'll call you if we need you again I assume my clients free to go yeah say counselor this Ferguson guy was pretty loaded I guess your client gets it all now you know, I don't like what you're implying, Sergeant. And let me put the thought to rest for you. In a nutshell, they're broke. Did she know that? so humiliated in my life. Take you. You're gonna need a criminal lawyer. Why? Because you're their prime suspect, Terry. That eyewitness was almost positive. Plus, <laughs> considering Stanley's business success, I mean, you did have motive. Business success. He was broke. But you didn't know that. Come on, Mom. Let's go home. That unsolved 187 out on Decker Road? What you got? Something addressed to a county steward. Local mailing. Christmas is early this year. You drive. Uh, thank you. Connie Stewart? She didn't show up. We mailed her check. Mind if we hang on to these for a few days? Sure. What else you know about her? She came from Morrisburg, but I don't know much else. She kept to herself pretty much. Wore sunglasses a lot. Had to, I reckon. Why is that? Bad eyes? And her boyfriend got rough. Well, thank you very much. Have a fine day. Stanley will be remembered for many reasons. A successful businessman, for all his contributions to the community. 
He gave of himself to those less fortunate, his time and his caring nature, never too busy to reach out with kindness. Kindness he learned from his humble beginnings on a small farm in Nebraska. A kindness he extended to friends and strangers alike. Stanley will be remembered as a loving, faithful husband to Terry, loving father to his daughter, Michelle. And now we commit Stanley to the earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. How lucky to have he such a beautiful daughter. He revived me. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Yes, I do. And you were lucky. You don't have the memories. Locusts. They're going over all the books, the inventory from the stores, warehouses, everything. Oh, Mrs. Ferguson. Hello. Is, um, is anyone in there? No. Alice? Did Stanley ever mention anyone named Connie? A woman? No. The police already asked me that. Thank you. 
You've been in here a while. Oh, well, I, I, I was just... Here you go. It's a list of good criminal attorneys, just in case you need one. Well, I'm, I'm a corporate lawyer. I'm not a criminal attorney. I told you that. You, you're going to need both. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Terry, what, what, what? What I need, Bruce, is a little help from an old friend to help me through a very difficult situation. Thank you. Hi. 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 I spoke to a realtor. She thinks the house will go real fast if I'm willing to take a beating. Are you still interested in that job? Can I start tomorrow morning? You bet. Thanks. See you bright and early. Yeah, and not too early. What's so odd about a sympathy card? Well, the note written on it isn't exactly hallmark. And, and look, there's no postage on it. So? Well, don't you see? It's got to be from this Connie person. Okay, Mrs. Ferguson, whatever you say. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got some real police work to do. I'll, uh, I'll see if the lab can lift some prints off of it, Mrs. Ferguson. Thank you. I got an efficiency and a 2B DR on Fern. Oh, well, I have furniture, and I need two bedrooms, because one room is for my daughter. No kids. But she's 18. She's away at college. No pets. First and last moves you in, comes to 600 bucks, and you pay your own use. How soon can I move in? How soon can you get me 600 bucks? Hey, Johnson, I've been doing some homework. I'm going to take a little drive over to Morrisburg and see the Stewarts. I'll be back by supper. Got gotcha. you. Watch it there. There's room for it on the truck, guys. All right. Well, that's the last of it. You're right, Mrs. F. Here's your check. You got a bargain. You didn't give me half of what it's worth. Hey, you wanted to move it fast. I got overhead. Nice doing business with you. <clears throat> Marlene can fit about one more box in her boat. All right. Okay. Guess we can put that in the wagon. Is this it? Yeah, that's it. My life crammed into two cars and a rented van. Hey, one step at a time. We're here for you, you know that. I know. You okay? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. You, you've gone over to the new place. I'll meet you there. Thank you.
If you don't mind my asking, Mrs. Stewart, what was the last time you spoke with your daughter? Seventeen years ago in December. Do you believe Connie has anything to do with this Jack person's death? Well, I just need to talk with her. That's the way I'll always remember her. Thank you, ma'am. I'll be sure you get this back. What did you tell him? What could I say, Vince? That our own daughter tried to kill us? That my daughter crippled me for life? Every time I hear a car pull up, I'm afraid it's her. No. No, I didn't say anything. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. That's some load there. Let me give you a hand. Hi. Oh, thanks. Hi. I got it. I got Hi. it. My name is Nettie. Oh, hi. Nettie Crowner. Hi. I'm Terry. Terry Ferguson. Welcome to Buckingham Palace. town the size of spit in Catahoula County. That's in Georgia. Wasn't a bad life. What brings you here? I just needed a change of view. What about you? You all alone in this big old world? Well, my daughter, uh, Michelle, is away at school. And uh, I lost my husband suddenly. I'm so sorry, Terry. I lost my man, too. Hmm. Well, to tell you the truth, Nettie, there, there are times when uh, I just don't feel like going on. I know. Oh, God, do I know. How do you keep going, Terry? Oh, well, there's... There's Michelle, of course. And Marlene. Marlene? She's my best friend. That's nice. Did you go to Nebraska State? Hmm. <laughs> Shoot, no, I didn't go to college. It's just for rich kids. <laughs> Why, did you go there? That's where I met Stanley. Listen, I gotta go. I, oh, God, look at the time. Thanks for the coffee. Well, listen, why, why don't we do something sometime? Sure. You know, like a movie? Yeah, that'd be nice. Great, it's I a don't day. know a soul here. <laughs> I like you, Terry Ferguson. They're good people. Oh. I think we're gonna be real good friends. Well, thanks. Yeah, I, I like you, too. It's a good thing we met. Oh, it's like, what do you call that when you meet somebody and... and A providence. It's like providence. Yes. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Morning, Johnson. Morning, Captain. You find out anything from the stewards? Well, nothing concrete. Here. Is that our suspect? Yeah. I want you to take this picture and get Cecil, go out to where that uh, Connie woman worked, have him do a drawing of what she looks like now. You got it. All right. Yeah. 
Nettie! <laughs> what are you doing here? I was just in the neighborhood. I thought I'd drop in and see this place you're always talking so much about. Well, this is it. How's it going? Oh, great. <laughs> oh, Marlene, I'd like you to meet Nettie Crowner. Nettie, this is my friend Marlene. Hi. I've heard so much about you, Nettie. Heard a lot about you, too. Yeah? Well, if it was good, believe it. And if it was bad, really believe it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I gotta be going. I don't wanna get you into trouble with your boss. Oh, don't be silly. You don't have to leave because of Marlene. No, 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 I really gotta be going. I just dropped in to say hi. <laughs> Bye, Marlene. It was nice meeting you. Nice meeting you, too, Nettie. Uh, maybe I'll see you later. Okay. Terry. Did you read this morning's paper? No. Why? <sighs> a house was robbed in your neighborhood last night. Are you serious? As a heart attack. According to the paper, it's the fourth one in the last two weeks. Here. Mace. Mace? A little self-defense never hurts. Besides, I don't pay you enough to live in a decent neighborhood. Comes in four different colors if you need to accessorize. <laughs> <laughs> you are a nut. But I love you for it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I've got to go make myself more beautiful for Milton. We're going out with some stiffs from his office. If things slow down, lock up early. And if you have any problems, call me. I'll be home till 7. Marlene, thank you for everything you've done for me. Yeah, you pull your own weight. I'll see you tomorrow morning, bright and early, but uh, uh, not too early. Right. <laughs> Marlene. Marlene, hi. Nettie, what are you doing here? You got a minute. Actually, I don't. I'm running a little late, and I have to meet my husband. I need to talk to you about Terry. I'm really worried about her. Let me fix you a drink. We can talk. So, what about Terry? You've really been helping her through this rough time, haven't you? She's my best friend. That's sweet. But just say, I don't think Terry deserves any help. What? Thank you, Mama. Detective Simon Stark, Meadow Park PD. I understand you're ready to release the name of the victim? Uh, that's correct. The victim was Marlene Morrison of 1107 Hillcrest Drive. She was found by her husband um, a little after 8 p.m. Thank you, sir. Police say they have no suspects as yet. This is the second murder in this area within the last three weeks. Excuse me. Excuse me, officer. Why are you just standing here? Just wait a second here. Stark. Pardon me, sir. What? What? What is it? Soon we'll be together, all my love. Stanley? Stanley? And Marlene? Would you know if your wife was having an affair? What? Do you think Terry killed them?
How did it happen? She was shot three times at close range with a small caliber handgun. You couldn't just keep like your husband. Come could on. You, you couldn't Come keep on. him away Milton. from my wife. Milton, what are you talking about? How could I would have forgiven them, you couldn't you? Inside. Just Come get on. him out of here. What's he talking about? We have reason to believe that your best friend and your husband were having an affair. What reason? I think you killed them because of it. Where were you at 7 o'clock? Listen, you. I didn't kill anybody. It was this, this, this is Connie. Oh. <laughs> and I don't know who she is or where she is, but you'd better find her. <laughs> that was a great performance. Oh, you bastard. Stay close to home, Mrs. Ferguson. We'll need to talk to you some more. Terry? What's the matter? Homicides, hollow point loads used both times. Bingo. <laughs> Thanks. Yes! <laughs> we got motive. Now, how do we know Milton didn't do it? No, oh, no, no. His alibi checks out. It's Terry Ferguson. I know it. Well, I don't know it. Oh, come on, Pat. She had motive, she had opportunity. We have the dress and the powder burns. Same gun did them both. Hell, we even got an eyewitness. Who will not make a positive identification. What do you want to do? I want a barbecue. -er. What? You're under arrest for murder. Put your hands against the wall, please. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. What's going on? Official police business, ma'am. You have the right to talk to a lawyer and have him present before and during any questioning. If you cannot afford to hire a lawyer, one will be appointed to represent you free of charge before and during any questioning, if you wish. You understand each of these rights as I have explained to you. Relax your wrist. Well, I'm in I'm in jail and I have been arrested for murder. Uh, would you please tell him I need his help now? Hold on. Yes, hold. Mr. Gossett will call you just as soon as he can. Is there a number where you can be reached? Oh, for God's sake, did you tell him I'm in jail? You blondie. Oh. As sweet as you look. Don't look down your nose, Queenie. You're one of us now. Terry Ferguson. It's your first time in, huh? Yeah, I couldn't tell. <laughs> I'm Tylene. This is my third time in. Uh, what'd you do? Hey, lady, I didn't do nothing. Now, they say I five-finger discounted some necklaces, 
but I didn't. And what didn't you do? I, um... I didn't murder my husband. Oh. Hey, you know, you look like the type. One of them ticking clock stepping wives just ready to go off, huh? I didn't kill my best friend either. Oh. Was they doing the hump to hump? Hey, now listen, there was nothing between Stanley and Marlene. Absolutely nothing. Whoa, whoa. Easy now. Easy. I believe you. I'm sorry. I, I, geez, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to lose my temper. No, 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 that's cool. Really, you know why? Because this place is just like the world. And how you get by is you stand up for yourself and yours. Don't take no crap from nobody. But hell, her woman never, ever apologize. Is this your husband's handwriting? Where'd you get this? We found, we found it. it. We found it in your friend Marlene's purse last night. Did you show this to Milton? I want to call my lawyer. And I want to call my lawyer now. Yes, ma'am. Shut up, Bruce. Just shut up and listen. How long have we known each other? I'll tell you. 19 years. I was maid of honor at your wedding, for God's sake, Bruce. Was that business, Bruce? No, no, of course not. And what about all the barbecues, the parties, and the baseball games? Was that just business, Bruce? <laughs> no, Terry, no. I'm... And let me tell you something else. Your name wouldn't be on the door of Morton, Frank, and Gossiter if it wasn't for Ferguson Furniture City. And I was half of Ferguson Furniture City. Now get off your fat retainer and come down here and help me. Get me out of here. We were lucky. They don't really have any evidence. We, Bruce, we were lucky? Yeah, I'm sorry. Look, I even, I even work in a system that dictates innocent until proven guilty. I hope you can forgive me. Can you? I need a ride home, Bruce. You've got it. Oh, I hate to be the one to tell you this, but look at the paper. Oh, my God. Bruce, how do I find a killer? I think you should let the police do their job. The police think I did it. Stop. Oh. Yes. Oh. Yes. 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 Stanley. Yes. 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 Captain. Look what just came in from the Department of Motor Vehicles. What is it? Connie Stewart traded in her car. Where? Briar Falls, a place called Jordan's Auto Salvage and Exchange. How long ago? About a month ago. Same time as the Decker Road murder. I knew you'd turn up somewhere. You want me to contact the Briar Falls PD? No, I think I'll contact him in person. It's beautiful. That's the whole story. Are they looking for this Connie person? <laughs> they don't think she exists. Police must be crazy. You're no killer. It'll all work out. You'll see. 
Tell me about Stanley. He was my everything. He was caring, he was giving, he was sensitive, but most of all, loving. <laughs> well, he had his faults. But overall, he, he was a perfect husband and father. Sorry. No, no, don't Sorry, stop, go, go on. on. Tell me more about Stanley. It'll make you feel better. Hello. Hi, honey. Oh, I'm just sitting here with Nanny. Yeah, hold on. It's Michelle. I uh, think I'll take it in the bedroom. Will you hang up for me? Sure, sure. I've got it. Hey! Everything all right? Oh, Michelle's having a hard time coping with everything. She wants to quit school and come home. I can't let her do that, not with this Connie on the loose. I never finished college, and I turned out just fine. I thought you never went to college. Well, it wasn't college, exactly. It was like adult vocational school. Where I'm from, that's higher education. What's eating you? Nothing. I, I'm just, uh, just worried about Michelle. And to tell you the truth, Nettie, I am very tired. Sure. Sleep tight. Thanks. Yeah, she was here. Checked out a few weeks ago. Only her name wasn't Stuart. Well, what was it? See for yourself. Any luck, Captain? Well, you swap cars. One of those roadside places out there, right off of 119. I'll run in all points on it for you. I appreciate that. Now, she listed the local residence as the Dixie Darling. You know it? Well, I went out there and talked to the desk clerk. Not much help. Kind of been long gone, of course. No forward in address. Not that I expected there to be. She checked in under an alias. What was it? Connie Ferguson. Connie Ferguson. <sighs> Probably nothing. But there was a big murder over in Meta Park about a month ago. Stanley Ferguson owned a bunch of furniture stores. You've probably seen him on TV. No. Come on down and say hello. Oh, right, right, right. Might be something. Well, it's worth checking out. Thank you, Clifford. Well, <laughs> the audit turned out better than I thought. What does this mean? It means when you sell the business, you'll have a nice little profit. How nice? 45, 50,000, more. Sorry, we're closed. We need to talk, Milton.
I am so sorry about the other night. I, I was just crazy with grief, that's all. I, I knew what I was saying wasn't true. Can you forgive me? Oh, I'm so glad you believe in me, Milton. Who killed him, Terry? Why? I, 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 don't, I don't know why. I wish I did, Milton. God, I wish I did. Two of the most important people in my life have been ripped away from me, and I don't even know why. Marlene loved this place. What's going to happen to it? I don't know. I guess I'll, I'll sell it. I'm so glad we talked, Terry. I thought I'd lost you forever. We've both lost too much already. I, uh, I have to go now, but if you need anything, or you want to talk, just call me, Milton. Michelle. This is Michelle. Uh, listen, you don't know me. I'm a friend of your mother's. My name's Nettie. Uh -huh. I, I hate to be the one to call you like this, but listen, your mom's been in a real bad car accident. Now, now, I, the, the, I just, you gotta come home, honey, you see? Uh, I made reservations for you. You got a pencil? Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, now, take this down. Okay, flight 66, yeah. Thanks, Nettie. What's wrong? My mom's been in a car wreck, and I have to catch a flight in a half an hour. Look, I'll give you a ride, okay? What happened, gents? Uh, I'm uh, Captain Cantrell from Old Roper County. You're uh, Stark and Beecham. Pat Beecham. Good to meet you. And, uh, I was just uh, wondering if uh, maybe you guys have seen this woman at some time. What's this all about, Ken? Well, she's one for murder back home. So? So she used a 32 caliber pistol with hollow point loads. Does that ring a bell? You got a name to go with this picture? Connie Jean Stewart. Honey, huh? So what do you need from us? Well, I was kind of hoping to talk to Mrs. Ferguson. Why? I tracked this Connie woman to a motel in Briar Falls, and she signed the register as Connie Ferguson. Bye, Bing. have no friends. Soon you'll have nothing. Oh, we have such a beautiful daughter. Her flight hasn't landed yet. There's still time.
pick up the phone, Michelle. Just pick up the phone, please. Pick up... Hello? Michelle. No, she's not here right now. Can I take a message? Where did she go? Well, she had to fly home. She had said her mom was in a car wreck or something. This is her mother. Oh. oh well, are you okay? Uh, how long ago did she leave? And which airline did she take? That was your turn. But I'm driving, you see? And I can turn anywhere I want. Who? Connie. Right. What have you done to my mother? Your mother. Right now, your mother's at the airport. She's all right. But not for long. Flight 224 to Phoenix is now departing from gate three. Will Terry Ferguson please pick up a white courtesy phone? Terry Ferguson. Your attention, please. This is Terry Ferguson. Mom. Michelle. Where are you? Connie has me. Only it's not. What? Don't spoil her, little surprise. Michelle, Michelle! Mother, listen to me. Here, write this down. Meet us at the old sanitarium. I'm coming to get you. Let's intimate, Terry. Just the three of us. Nobody else. Do you understand me? You hurt her, and I'll kill you. Yeah, sure, right, bitch. She's scared half to death. I believe she's gonna lead us right to Connie. Let's go.
No. Nettie. Oh, I can't be. Where's Michelle? Hold it. You didn't say, Connie, may I please? What did I ever do to you? As if you didn't know, you slut. Get out of there. Michelle, are you all right? Shut up. Get back in the house. Yes. Baby, are you all right? Huh, baby? Shut up. Let Michelle go. No. Will you take off that stupid wig? Connie thought you'd like it. Why are you doing this? Stanley loved me. Oh, sure, that's why you killed him. I didn't kill him. He's here. He's right here with me. He'll always be right here with me. He was my first, you know? He loved me. We were so happy. And then you, you came along with all your itsy poo baby doll ways and you stole him away. You ruined our life together. My life. You. I didn't know. I, I really didn't know. If I had, I, I wouldn't have. Stanley must have, must have loved you very, very much. He did. Oh, he did. If there were some way to make it up to you, I, I would. I, uh, I, I hope you'll let me help you somehow. No! no! Michelle! For not fooling me one bit. Think I'm stupid. No more talking. It's, this is the end of it. We're in here. Come on in.
Okay, now, honey. You stay here and you keep quiet. I'll come back for you, all right? Where are you going? You'll be all right. I'll be right back. Mommy, I love you. I know, baby. I really do. I love you, too. You're gonna be okay, honey. Excuse me. I guess I put you through quite an ordeal. Yes, you have. I'm sorry, Mrs. Ferguson. But what's going to happen to you? Well, Stanley always used to say, if something happens, you have to get back up on the horse. I guess that's what we'll do. Terrific.